Good evening. I don't hear it, Dolores. There we go. Good evening and welcome to the June 4th regular meeting of the Wethersfield Town Council. If we could have Councillor Hurley please lead us in the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. Would the town clerk please take attendance? Councillor Breton? Here. Councillor Forrest? Here. Councillor Hurley? Here. Councillor Lutina? Here. Councillor Lesser? Here. Councillor Rao? Here. Councillor Spinella? Here. Deputy Mayor Martino? Here. And Mayor Warren uh, Bello? Here. Thank you. <clears throat> um, we have no hearings tonight, so we will move into general oh, before we do that may i have a motion to add an executive session for land acquisition please so moved is there a second second okay all in favor aye, aye. aye. any opposed anybody abstaining motion passes nine zero thank you um now on to general comments are there any members of the public who would like to speak tonight please remember you have five minutes to speak sir come on up <clears throat> I'm lost at the read now. A problem, a a problem that concerns the taxpayers of Weatherstone since 1998. Town jeep been driven on sidewalks to clear the snow. Do, doing this is very damaging the grass. Looks like someone has annihilated the grass near the sidewalk, making deep tire tracks in the grass, resulting in property damage, looks like. As a consequence of doing this, it reflects how sloppy and unprofessional the physical services run. Our leadership with other towns is getting laughed at our snow removal job because it's done very poorly. The residents are getting tired of flipping the bill for gravel grass seed to fix the damaged grass. grass Grass near the sidewalk where the Jeep, town Jeep was made, perhaps money would be better spent if we got an industrial sized snow blower to clean, to remove the snow instead of driving the Jeep on the sidewalk. Thank you. Could you give us your name and your address, please, for the record? Ethan Guida, 499th Street, Weathersfield, Connecticut. Thank you. Appreciate it. Is there anybody else from the public who would like to speak tonight? Mr. Colantonio? Good evening. Gus Colantonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. Ah, just a few things tonight. I, I guess a couple meetings ago, there was a gentleman from Charter Road, I guess, uh, complaining about... Uh, the potholes, and uh, and obviously he had some questions, and he wanted to intermingle, or like you know, expecting an answer. And, and I understand that that's not allowed because in, otherwise, where does it go? But with the same token, like you know, we have two chances of speaking at the very beginning of the meeting, which is great, and and toward the end. Now, if I do ask a question, and I do not like to basically talk, but I can ask the question. During the meeting, the least I could do it, or the least you guys could do it, it's give me an answer. Now, on previous occasion, I, I asked the question, what's, uh, what are the guidelines for the speed limit on, in what is it? My street is 25. There is Collier Road, 30, 30 foot wide road, no sidewalks, the speed limit, I think it's 35. And uh, Walker Hill, it's 35, it used to be 40. And I just asked a simple question. What are the guidelines? Is it the width of the road? Is it how safe the road is? Are the kids around? I mean, you know, so I never really get an answer. Not too long ago, I complained, you know, well, last year, I guess, I complained when there was an accident on Morrison Avenue in the driveway, very close by, 
Sayos Dean. And I complain that there is basically an evergreen that right now it's over the sidewalk. It's very inconvenient. You just go by there, you have to duck. And I'm only five, three and a half. The average people were six feet tall. I mean, you know, forget it. They can even walk under the sidewalk because there are these branches. And I truly believe that the accident that had happened last year was because of poor maintenance. When are we going to address it? How long does it take? This, this, this is crazy. <laughs> Unbelievable. You know, Wethersfield used to be a completely different town. When I used to live in Hartford, <coughs> I mean, Westfield was a dream <coughs> town. Now, over the years, has been going down and down and down. So, but anyway, the reason that I'm talking tonight is basically because if I do ask a question and I do not really expect an answer right away, the decency of addressing my question during the meeting would be appreciated. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Colantonio. Is there anybody else from the public who'd like to speak tonight? Young. Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper <coughs> Mill Road. At this last council meeting, I guess it was a special council meeting when you um, discussed the budget and finalized the budget, I um, I think your rate is extremely high for this time in the economy. I've talked to you about this many times. And how much did you really cut from your budget? So, so fine of a cut. And it's now on the backs of the, of the taxpayers. I don't know why in the world you folks could come up with any increase given the fact that our home prices have dropped from 16 to 17, or, yeah, 16 to 17, what, 88, $8,300 80, $8, per house on the average, based on the sales that you had. That's not a performance, that's a failure. Yet, you continue to reward others and make the taxpayers pay. We've seen long-term agreements, leases, that should have been reassessed. And this council and this mayor has refused to do that. I've asked more than once, more than twice, more than three times, more than I don't know how many times. I get no answer. Yet, we could have adjusted those leases on those properties, but failure of this council to do so. You'd rather increase tax rates, mill rates, tell citizens to go sit down when their five minutes are up, but to go back and, and renegotiate a rate, a rental rate, you don't have the backbone to do it. <clears throat> and it's too bad you're sitting up here. We also have Transitional Academy that's costing us 50 some thousand dollars a year. Nobody cared about what that cost was going to be because, hey, the taxpayer, we're just going to raise the mill rate on them all. Too bad for them, huh? But, <clears throat> That's how you folks are. And the citizen has to pay and pay forever. We have these situations going around the state, but specifically up in the Hartford area, where our money is flowing in there to political people, and we have no vote whatsoever. We, our town council doesn't even make a comment in the news about all the money that this, the city of Hartford is now taking from the rest of us. <clears throat> Just recently, I read about an article in Hartford where some landlord had a, <laughs> a sweetheart deal for a million dollars with HUD, and they've shut him down now. But in the article, it also mentioned he had a tax 
real estate tax deal with the with the city of Hartford, where he was only where he was exempt from 80 percent of his taxation. And what did Mayor Bronin, when he came here and pleading for us to join team the team with him to bail out Hartford? He's the it's his city. It's his council members, a bunch of bimbas. And we have situations right here in, in Wethersfield, as Gus is talking about, on issues of just a sidewalk and a street. He doesn't get the right answer. The rest of us get no answer. All we get is a tax <coughs> bill. And that tax bill is, has grown and grown on all of us, including you, your folks, you folks. And I don't understand why you put up with it. You must have a reward somewhere in heaven or somewhere else. As long as you keep raising taxes, your reward will come someday from somewhere. We've seen that with prior mayors. They get nice appointments up in the state of Connecticut. They pick up a paycheck after they've served and they've gone on. Maybe that's what you all are working for because you know, you're doing the same thing as the state of Connecticut does. Tax, borrow, and spend. And then, of course, we have the people down the end of the dais here at that last meeting that I attended where there was no public comment. Mr. Young, yes. your five minutes are up. Please conclude Let your comments. Let me conclude. I, I, I really find it that for them to vote against the budget was, was poor. I think all the whole year, as we went along and you voted on issues of spending, you were right there to vote for spending, spending. And when you get to the budget, you backed off. You gotta commit yourself all year long, not just that one single night, folks. Thank you, Mr. Thank you very Young. much, madam. Is there anybody else from the public who would like to speak? Okay, seeing nobody, we will move on to council reports. Do I have councilors with reports? Okay, no council reports. Moving. Oh, oh, well, Mike has. Oh, sorry. Um, just to talk about the um, Masonic Temple for the HDC. Um, I know there's some interested parties in the audience uh, today. The. Um, for those that don't know, this is the building on the corner of Church and Main Street on the north side, so it's not the Village Pizza side. Um, there's some discussion right now about the uh, possibility of a group home going in there. There's been some uh, concerns from the residents, not only in Old Weathersfield, but in <coughs> the entire town of Weathersfield about that. Um, I think the builder is going to be going back to the HDC with a revised plan, and it's also got to go before the... Uh, planning and Zoning Commission as well. So um, Planning and Zoning hasn't heard it yet, but HDC has, and uh, like I said, they will be going back before them with uh, revised plans. Okay, thank you. Any other council reports? Okay, council comments? No council comments? Leave it up to you, Mayor. <laughs> I was going to say, we don't want to take your thunder. We know what you would like to talk about. Well, there was so much that happened. We had the Memorial Day Parade and um, the Mayor's Ball. It's been a bit in the fireworks. So we have a lot of thank yous going out to town staff for all of their work over the last few weekends. There's been some tremendous community events in town. We also had the 5K yesterday. We had the Chamber Car Show yesterday. So um, it's been quite a few really um, good weekends with the town events. And I'd like to personally thank everybody involved in those events. Anything else? Any other comments? Deputy Mayor. I figured it would have been in your comments, so I'll just add to what you said. Uh, we also had recently, the mayor and I were down at um, Solomon Wells for the 10-year uh, anniversary ribbon cutting of the farmer's market oh, see, that went one. off. And uh, I'd like to show out a, show out a, uh, a thank you to Chip's Restaurant for the tips, uh, tip a cop that they had to raise money for Special Olympics. I believe that was a success. And like Amy was talking about the fireworks and stuff like that. Thank you. Okay. Anything else? 
All right, we'll move into the town manager's report. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor and, and Council. I, too, would like to uh, send a very big thank you out to the town staff for all their hard work putting these events together. I think they're special for the community and uh, great job. Um, other than that, Peter Gillespie is here this evening to go over his economic development report. Good evening, Peter. Thank you. Good evening, Madam Mayor, Deputy Mayor town manager and council members, and of course the public. Uh, you should have received in your packet a uh, month of report dated May 2018. It's been a few months since I've been in front of you with one of these reports. Um, in total, in that report, there are about 35 different projects that uh, are listed there. I'll just uh, focus in on a few uh, of the highlights, and if you have questions of any of the others, I'd be uh, more than happy uh, to answer those questions. In terms of recently completed uh, projects uh, or new business starts. Um, a couple of note uh, that, are, that are primarily food and or restaurant related. Uh, uh, River Cafe has finally opened at uh, 100 Great Meadow uh, and the deck is completed. If obviously you haven't been there, they just started serving lunch, I think last week. So uh, instead of dinner time now, you can go there at lunchtime. So uh, we're getting great, great feedback on, on that uh, new business. Uh, uh, the Cali Boone Ramen Restaurant at 1321 Salestine Highway is also open, and uh, we participated in a ribbon cutting there. And then, of course, uh, Pasta Vita at 1142 Salestine Highway is, has been a great success. So a couple of highlights there for new businesses. In terms of projects that you may see under construction throughout the community, lots of activity at the Weathersfield Shopping Center as Ulta Beauty and K Jewelers are beginning the uh, process of... Uh, uh, interior fit out for both of those businesses so within the next few months I believe you should see both of those businesses uh, open if you haven't been up to Ridge Road 275 Ridge Road uh, that apartment building complex is making great strides and I believe in a few months they'll be talking to us about getting uh, certificates of occupancy for the first few apartments so um, they've they've come a long way there you may have also seen down at the corner of Middletown Avenue and Maple um, restaurant supply uh, they're uh, redoing the facade in anticipation of that business relocating from Hartford. Uh, some of the facade improvements were funded through our facade program, so please take a look at that project. Up on the Berlin Turnpike, 1881 Berlin Turnpike, you've probably seen site work underway. That's for the uh, gas station and convenience store at the corner of Arrow Road. And then on Beaver Road, the former veterinary clinic is being purchased and is going to be converted into a doggy daycare. So those of you who have dogs, um, you, you've got someone to take care of your dog during the daytime. A couple of projects that are on the horizon have not yet started construction. Um, the Borden uh, has added a second project uh, uh, on the Silestine Highway next to the Fun Zone. They, are, uh, they have actually purchased 1160, which is the office building on the corner. Uh, we did approve plans for 39 additional residential apartment units in that building. That brings the total between the two sites to 150 apartments. So uh, I believe uh, the transaction on the real estate closing uh, was about two weeks ago. So they are now uh, in new ownership uh, in the hands of the developer. So uh, we're ex expecting uh, demolition work to start within literally the next few weeks. So uh, great news to report on that. Up on Ridge Road, we did approve uh, 170 Ridge Road, the former uh, school there for 30, 32 market rate apartments. Um, they're going through the uh, acquisition process with the state of Connecticut, which is taking a little bit longer than they anticipated, but work should be starting there relatively soon. Uh, in terms of projects under review, there was a question earlier about 245 Main Street, which is the former Masonic building. That is uh, going to go back to the Historic District Commission, but it will be in front of the Planning and Zoning Commission at their June 19th meeting. So if anyone is interested in that project, please attend that meeting. Uh, there's a potential new buyer for the Blades Salon building on Main Street. Uh, that's going to planning and zoning tomorrow night. And then uh, we're anticipating the Webb Dean Stevens submitting an application to planning and zoning for their new museum expansion in July. And then lastly, uh, you may have seen that on Friday, the uh, Silas Robbins house uh, was sold, the bed and breakfast on the Broad Street Green. So there will be new operators uh, of the Silas Robbins house uh, starting uh, very soon. Uh, I did not include on, on this list, but there are about another dozen projects that are 
probably going to be submitted within the next few weeks and months, uh, which will um, also be beneficial to the community. They haven't been submitted yet, so I haven't uh, mentioned them in my report. I'd be happy to answer any of your questions. Thank you. Are there any questions from Council? Councilor Hurley? I had two, Peter. Um, the Princeton Street development, do yep. you have any update on that? They are, I think, hung up with the MDC on the sewer and water connections. Um, there are four building lots there. They would be building a new through street, uh, obviously called Princeton Street, but I think um, they've run into some technical challenges with the MDC. Okay. And then I saw Pelton's kind of nothing in there. Are they moving? Pelton's has moved. Uh, okay. There's a new owner uh, for that property. Um, and the, they've started work inside. Uh, Sprint Communications will be going in there. Did Pelton's move somewhere around us? or? I think Pelton's may have closed. Oh, closed. Okay. They have a small presence in Middletown, not the same presence they had here. So I think they've actually closed and haven't reopened okay. anywhere. Thanks. Sure. Councilor Lesser. Thank you, Mayor. Hi, Peter. How are you? How are you? Thanks, Thanks for your report. Can you uh, update us a little more on the Borden? I know that the demolition is going to start in a few weeks. What is the overall time frame, uh, roughly? I believe, uh, without having the timeline in front of me, the, the construction for the demolition and the new construction, the new building, is about 18 months, if I'm not mistaken. The uh, fit out, obviously, for the other building at 1160 is a much shorter window because it's all primarily interior improvements, and I think that may only be a nine month um, construction time frame. I, I may have those off by a little bit, but um, I think that generally is the time frame. Um, he had indicated, I think the closing got delayed a couple more weeks. He was talking about starting construction in June. It may now be pushed out to July. He has not submitted anything yet, but I know he's been talking to the building department about what he needs to do to get started on the, on the demolition. I saw some, um, uh, drills testing uh, occurring last week on the property which indicates to me that they're getting pretty pretty close to starting there roughly 18 months is it i think that was the full t build out from start you know of the demolition process throughout the final certificate of occupancy for the for the new building at the fun zone site okay thank you sure any other questions also forrest Thank you, Mayor. I'm looking at number eight, the renovation of the Carmen Anthony's restaurant. It doesn't say any more detail on that. Could you fill us in? Is it another restaurant? Is it something yeah, it's else? another restaurant. It, it, uh, it's taken uh, quite a bit longer than we had all anticipated. They're, it seems like they're doing work on the weekends, but um, it's a new owner. He, would, he was planning on opening up a new restaurant. Um, has not shared much uh, in the way of detail with us yet, but um, is beginning to make some progress, but it's taken, it's taken quite a bit of time. And then I'm looking at number two under plans for review for the Blade Salon building. Uh, it sounds like that's coming up tomorrow, tomorrow night. Uh, what is the what It's is an the office there? office tenant, and a new. I, I believe they're going to buy the property too, so the ownership is going to change hands as well. Got it. And now on number three under the approved, not yet for construction, it's the Lexington Partners, but it's the 34 apartments at what you might call the old Equity Bank building or Webster building. I'm going to find it. Um, if you could, uh, does that change from uh, strict commercial over to a mixed use type of a venue and does that change or affect the tax revenue or the tax base by that change? So it will be a mixed use, it'll change from the office tenant. The first floor will maintain, I believe, two um, office tenants, a medical and a real estate office. And then the upper floors will be converted to residential, so it will be a mixed-use tenant. Uh, they are making substantial improvements to the interior of the building, so the assessed value will increase. Um, I haven't seen the actual numbers, but it will increase in value with the improvements they're proposing. Will there be an offset to the uh, the property, the business property, or the I don't know, personal property, but the, the personal property of the business that's not taxable, though, even though the increase in the value of the building itself? I think the significant increases will be to the real estate value with the with the improvements they're making. Are they planning any other improvements on the land that's not internal to the building? They're fixing up the property, the site, the landscaping, and the utilities. There are there are other improvements other than interior. They're redoing the facade. <laughs> Um, they're doing an outdoor uh, area where the drive-through 
um, presently is, um, and getting rid of that entire drive-through lane, which will no longer be needed. So uh, they are making site work as well. Are there any sketches for that particular yep, property? Sure. Is they on? Are they on your? Are they on the website yet? Like your, I don't know. Of the I don't know if they are, but we can certainly, uh, through the town manager, get you electronic copies of those. Sure. And has that? Has those sketches and that planning design gone through? Um, you know, like design review. Went through design review as well as uh, planning and zoning commission and public hearings. So um, yes. Okay. Thank you. Yep. Are there any other council questions? Okay, seeing none. Thank you, Peter. All right, have a good night. Appreciate your time. Certainly. Town Clerk, do you have any communications tonight? I do. Uh, June is red, uh, the month that everybody in the state has to register their dogs. We did 123 dogs today, so up, so by as of tonight, we have 198 of the 1,700 dogs <laughs> registered. <laughs> so it's a few. Lo we have a few more to go. Uh, we have a shred day. It's nine to one on Saturday, the 16th of June, at the town lot on the town uh, parking lot right here. We have um, at the at the same time the uh, there's a hazardous waste collection at the high school. Oh, I need to know that. Also that morning, but they close at 12 and we go to one. Um, there is a state primary uh, in on August 14th. And we have the actual election in November 8th, uh, November 6th, I'm sorry. Absentee ballots are available for both of them. Um, the, obviously, the primary, the ballots are going to be due, are going to be ready for July uh, 24th for that primary. You have to be already enrolled in a party. Unless you're unaffiliated, then you have until half day before the election to get into a party. Um, but the, uh, in the first week, first Friday of October, the uh, absentee ballot applications will be ready for uh, the November election. That's it. Thank you. <clears throat> our next item, <clears throat> excuse me, our next item on the agenda is the acceptance of a resignation from boards and commissions. Um, we, that's on our agenda for information. We don't have jurisdiction over resignations for the Board of Education. Um, but since Polly Moon is here, I would like to thank her for her service on the Board of Education and her time that she, and commitment that she's given the town of Wethersfield. Thank you, Polly. Um, <laughs> okay, so we will move into other business. Do I have a motion for the approval of a grant? Um, motion to authorize the purchase of taser cameras and a server for $25,093.30 and an application for the OPM recording equipment grant for the Wethersfield Police Department. Do I have a second? Second. Okay, and I see the Chief is here. Uh, yeah, thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. Chief Trans here to talk about the... Uh, the two items, this will be similar to the body cams where the town pays up front and then seeks reimbursement. Thank you. Yeah, this is just a, a continuation of what we had already done. Uh, we need a, a backup server to the original server. Uh, and seeing as that they're willing to pay for the taser cams, um, I learned a, a lesson in this is that these taser cams didn't last as long at least the one that's that we have and a lot of our tasers don't have the cameras anymore so this is a way of replacing it the taser cams however i just have to explain that um we have older model tasers we get as we get the newer tasers these are the cameras that will fit the newer tasers so even though we're getting a number of these taser cams they won't be outfitted until we now replace the tasers that we have. Um, we've been replacing that at uh, like four or five a year. They're expensive, so that's why it's taken us a while. But at least we'll have now a, a reservoir of taser cams that we didn't have before. So. Okay. Are there any questions, Councilor Hurley? I have a question on 
Uh, do they have to like push a button or does it automatically come on when they when <clears throat> when a taser is drawn and activated that's when the the laser light comes on the camera is already at the same time as when the camera is on so as soon there as they isn't draw. you don't have to actively turn on the camera it comes on with the taser when you activate it okay thanks <clears throat> councilor latina hi chief hi so we're buying the cameras, but we don't have the new tasers yet? We do have some, and they will be replaced. But as we replace the tasers, that's when we have the cameras put on them. How many do we have? How many tasers? Um, geez, I don't know the exact number. I'd say around 30. Does each officer have one? Each patrol officer, yes. And is it necessary to have this? Well, I think it's better to have the camera on the tasers because it eliminates a lot of the, the questions that come up with any kind of an arrest or where deployment of a taser is used. It, uh, it is, it's just a, a better system when you have the camera on there. Um, you see what happened. Would the body cams, though, pick up whatever was happening if the officer discharged a taser? Most likely, but you never know for sure. This is like hedging your bets. And the state's paying for them, so that's why we decided to go with the, the taser cams. And does the server that utilizes the video for the taser cam also serve the purpose for the body cam? It's two separate systems. Do we already have a, a, a server for the taser cams? Is there any additional cost to maintaining those servers? The, there will be a cost for maintaining servers, yes. We already have the one for the tasers. We have the, uh, the one for the, um, the dash cams. That's going to be replaced by the new server, and we needed a redundant server to, to back up that new server. And there is a maintenance cost to those, yes. Thank you. Are there any other questions? Councilor Lester. Thank you, Mayor. Hi, Chief. Hi. Um, just in terms of, are most towns going through, going to this taser camera, and, and do many towns already have it and employ it and use it? I wouldn't say most, but uh, many do, some don't. The, there's a problem with the taser cam, I'm sorry, there's a problem with the body cams that I tried to explain the last time. <clears throat> Depending upon where it is on the body, if in fact you draw a weapon, whether it's a taser or not, sometimes what happens is it covers the camera. The taser cam won't be covered in any way, shape, or form. It's, it's like insurance, it's just to make sure that whatever transpires gets recorded. Um, it's, it's hard to try to cover all your angles, but I'm trying to do that now because the fact that the state is paying for it. I don't know how you answer my next question, but maybe you just give an estimate. Do we use tasers often in Weathersfield in fighting no. crime? I'm very proud of the fact that we don't. Um, in fact, we went two years with zero deployments of taser. And I think it had a lot to do with the fact that uh, some of the people that we arrest have learned what a taser can do, and they, once they see that red light on their chest, they stop. They, they stop, which is exactly what we're looking for. Um, it's really saved on injuries from both the police side and the suspect side, which is good for everybody. Um, so it's a very beneficial instrument to use. Um, there is some, um, there, there are some departments that use it a lot more. We're one of the ones that don't seem don't to have to use it as much, which I'm grateful for. Got it. Thank you. Councilor Rell. Good evening, Chief. Uh, this is more of a logistical question for either the tasers or the body cams. Are they rechargeable batteries? Yes. Do they do the officers recharge them on their own time, or do you, after shift go into the headquarters, headquarters, dock them, and there's a bank of chargers there, and what they do is when they put it in, and then they take it out. Okay. Is there any liability coverage for any of our officers if either a camera, a body cam, or a taser camera fail to operate? And, you know, a suspect in court goes up against the officer's 
word. I, I, that's a hard one to answer. We didn't have any cameras years ago, okay? Um, and we seem to fare fairly well. But the atmosphere in the country, including Connecticut, has changed somewhat. The, having the cameras as evidence of what transpired goes a long way. It also goes a long way, like I said the last time, in that the officers know that there's a camera and they, they I don't want to say they treat the suspects better, but in reality, they do. It, it's just a fact of life. The cameras are beneficial, in my opinion, to any, almost any situation. It keeps everybody honest. Now, it's, they're not perfect. You might get a, a situation where you have a, a bad angle or there's something happens to the camera where it didn't work at that time. And yeah, you're gonna get those kind of questions. Well, why didn't it work this time? It worked other times, you're covering up. I don't know how you're gonna combat that. It's just, you know, life is, you know, it, it, it's, it happens, you know, things do happen. And that was one of my fears for the ba body cameras was just that. Okay, thank you. Any other council questions? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed? Me. Any abstentions? Motion passes. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. Um, next on the agenda, request of the Board of Education. Do I have a motion? Yes, Mayor. I move to authorize the use of $62,013.76 of the Board of Ed Capital Reserve for a phase one of a long range school renovation plan. Second. Okay, I have a motion and a second. Mr. Manager. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. Uh, Superintendent of Schools Michael Emmett has submitted a memo which is in your packet uh, for the purpose of requesting the funds the Board of Ed would like to do kind of a wholesale analysis of the remaining buildings in their in their inventory uh, towards the future of education in Connecticut. And Mr. Emmett's here to talk to you about that. Good evening. Uh, education in Weathersfield, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Keep it narrow. We're right? sticking with Weathersfield here tonight. Uh, good evening, Mayor Bello uh, and Council, uh, Mr. Bridges. Uh, thanks for the opportunity to be uh, with you this evening. Um, the process that we're going through at this point in time, having finished a major renovation of Weathersfield High School, um, we're starting to look to the future. Um, we currently have five elementary schools um, that uh, for the most part are becoming quite tired. Um, the idea here is not to come forward with a plan that starts tomorrow, but to be methodical about it and to look at multiple options. So the idea of this phase one study is a two-pronged approach. First and foremost, we're going to take a look at an enrollment study uh, that encompasses the next 10 years. What will our enrollment look like? It's interesting, Mr. Gillespie spoke tonight and I was doing the math rough and tough and construction projects that are either in progress or are uh, projected to start uh, bring in approximately 310 potential housing units here in Weathersfield over the next uh, couple years. Um, with that also, we are looking at where our schools are at right now with regard to enrollment. And we look at schools such as Webb right now, which um, is under-enrolled. And we look at schools like Highcrest, which are really over-enrolled. So we need to take a look at um, where our neighborhoods are booming and where our neighborhoods have kind of aged. The second prong here is to take a look at the facilities, um, those that we have both our elementaries as well as Silas Dean Middle School. I want to talk a little bit about Silas Dean Middle School. It has undergone a renovation already, and the idea would not be to do a significant renovation. However, as we've just engaged with shared services, and we are working on that, as Sally Katz can attest to in the back, um, the idea of doing a facility analysis on Silas Dean would give us an idea of what we would need for capital improvement down the road. I also mentioned options. So some of the options that we're looking at with this phase one study are as follows. Does Silas Dean have the capacity to take in grade six, to have a traditional grade six, seven, eight? Do we have the potential to contract from five elementary schools to four, thus saving money? Do we have the ability to add preschool, either in a standalone preschool building with one of our remaining schools, or preschool within each of our elementary school buildings? Do we have the ability also to um, build new versus renovate? 
we know that our schools are tired, so at this point in time, we are looking uh, to make that uh, move to the future. We'd also look at prioritization, which schools need the work first, and we're also looking at it from a perspective of money. How much is this going to cost? The idea of this phase one study is part of a, a larger, um, long-range 10-year plan that uh, would map out where our schools will be for the future. And with that, I'll take any questions you have. Thank you. Are there any council questions? Councilor Latina. Oh. Yes, sir. Sorry. <laughs> no. Latina. Ladies first. This is Latina. Hi. Hello. Um, what would be the next step should we approve this tonight? Do you have a plan to do like an RFP or? Yes. Good. Very good question. Very good question. We'll be working with the firm Malone McBroom for the um, residency enrollment study. And we will be going out to RFP uh, to solicit bids um, to look for a company to come in and do that facilities assessment. Uh, the timeline for this actually is really over the course of the summer. Um, we've already started to provide um, capital improvement historical documents. Um, I'll be headed over to Marsh Street to go into the second floor uh, and look for plans, which right now, from what I saw last week, they are all over the place. Um, and then we will be engaging in that process over the course of the summer. Uh, upon approval tonight, if you um, so choose, we'll bring this before the Board of Ed at next Tuesday's meeting to move forward with both the enrollment study as well as moving forward with the RFP. And then after that, you said phase one, so additional phases after? That is correct. So we take a look at the options. Now, the key piece here, Mrs. Latina, is obviously the communication piece. So we'd have to look at the options. What do those options look like? We have to float those options out to the community, um, and we have to weigh them. Uh, there are going to be those people that would say absolutely positively not do not close a school. Um, there are going to be others that are going to say this is the perfect time to, to contract because you potentially are building new. With the enrollment study, you can map out where your, your residence lines are going to be. And ultimately this plan, it addresses everybody. The one elementary school that I want to mention is Webb. Webb had a renovation back in, I want to say about 2005 thereabouts. So that would be a school certainly on the surface that we wouldn't be looking to renovate on a major basis. However, I can tell you, you see it in capital improvement every single year. The windows were never done. That would be a, a project we'd need to get finished. In addition to that, the air conditioning was never finished. And we have old heating units that we struggle to get parts for. So those would be more of the cosmetic um, approaches. You have other buildings that, uh, such as Hanmer and Highcrest that have really outlived their useful life. Highcrest, for example, dates back to 1973. Uh, the open classroom model, which we obviously, in the day and age of Newtown, have had to work very hard to reinforce from a safety and security perspective. Thank you. I You're thank welcome. you for doing this. I know it's a long time coming, so I appreciate it. You're very welcome. Councilor Hurley? Okay, you answered most of my questions, okay. but I did have one more. Uh, you mentioned preschool. Are they going to do a study on the facilities in town that give preschool um, and how that could maybe put them out of, out of work? Uh, that's a very good question. They would not go out and look at preschool um, out in town. They would focus only on our buildings. What we have right now is a preschool three and a preschool four program, which is typical peer. Um, it is a half-day program housed at Webb. None of our other elementary schools have a preschool program, so we're pretty limited at this point. Okay, so nothing would be no. done to look at what would happen if we did do preschool in our in our schools. No. Okay. Councilor Ralph. First, I'd like to start off by saying those that came in 1973, be it Highcrest or <laughs> others at this <laughs> dais, have not lived there out their uh, useful life uh, 45 is Just the uh, school has <laughs> I'm still 44 so I got a couple months to go uh, thank you uh, dr. Emmett but uh, so with consolidation of districts has have has the Board of Ed looked at that at all yet um, I know looking across the town there's a couple that are kind of close together like a Emerson and a Charles Wright are close together uh, even Hanmer is a little bit, yes. you know, close. Uh, has there been any forethought on that at all, or just leave it up to the uh, consultants to do with this at, funding? At, at this point in time, we'd leave it up to the consultants. I've talked um, for probably the better part of the past year about my dreams. You know, my dream would be ultimately to build a new Hanmer. It would be to build a new Highcrest, um, renovate as new. 
um, Emerson Williams, uh, potentially looking at Charles Wright as a preschool center, um, and then doing some of the, the cosmetic and work that wasn't done on web to get web finished as well. But there again, I want to make decisions based upon data and solid data. Um, going in and looking and seeing, you know, what are the conditions of the roofs? There may be priorities here that we don't see. There also may be issues around the, the residency in terms of our schools that are booming. I'm looking at uh, kindergarten numbers for next year, and right now Emerson and Highcrest are off the charts in terms, and we're early June, and I've got huge numbers in kindergarten uh, in both Highcrest and, uh, and Emerson Williams. So we'll look at those trends and we'll see what those trends are looking like and uh, we'll make some informed decisions based on that data. Okay, thank you. Thank you, any other questions? Deputy Mayor? Uh, Mike, within, within the study on, on options, I mean, I know the uh, CREC program is having problems with you know, funding from the state as well as everybody else. Yes. Uh, when they do their analysis, can, will they be looking at the building on Walcott Hill so that if CREC was to look at giving that facility up we might be able to utilize that and solve some of our problems as well. Are you speaking of the Discovery Academy? Yeah. Yeah, at this point in time, I haven't heard anything specific about CREC wishing to give that particular property up, but I will tell you that CREC has some, I believe, $660 million in real estate, um, and they were looking at a sizable deficit for uh, the upcoming fiscal year. Um, at this point in time, that's not our building, so that would not be part of the scope of this phase one study. Um, obviously, if that was something that we'd want to talk about in the future, and if that was available, we would certainly alter our plan to, uh, to take a look at that, no doubt about it. Okay, thank you. Are there any other council questions? Okay, seeing none, we'll take a vote. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion passes. Thank you. Thank you. Moving on to item C, appointment of Scott and Scott. Do I have a motion? Motion to approve the contingency fee arrangement of Scott and Scott attorneys at law as outside counsel to represent uh, Weathersfield in the opi opioid li litigation. Do I have a second? Second. Okay. Uh, thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. I'll ask Attorney Bradley to come up and talk a little bit about this one. Uh, the Budget and Finance Committee interviewed three firms with interest in representing the town of Weathersfield in this particular issue. Um, and uh, I believe that the committee unanimously uh, is recommending Scott and Scott. Thank you. Mayor, if I may, before you get going, I'm gonna recuse myself from this particular uh, debate. I have a business interest with one of the competing firms and it's just not appropriate for me to be here. So okay. I'm just gonna step out for a bit. Thank you, I appreciate that. Councilor Forrest. Okay. Yes, good, good evening. evening. Uh, I think the manager uh, summarized it uh, adequately. We, uh, we uh, requested proposals from three law firms and, and the uh, Public Safety Committee, uh, or the Budget and Finance Committee under um, Councilor Martino, uh, Mr. Hurley, um, Mr. Uh, uh, who else was there? Mary Breton uh, and, and Ken Lesser were there. Yeah, we interviewed all three <laughs> firms. Uh, each interview lasted a half hour. They all presented their uh, resumes and detailed proposals. And um, um, I think the committee felt that uh, the proposal of Scott and Scott was outstanding, uh, not only on the uh, and the committee members could speak for themselves, but also the proposal financially was the most favorable of the three. So I guess for all of those reasons, uh, uh, their qualifications, experience, their proposal, uh, their knowledge, and um, the fee proposal, all those reasons, and probably maybe some uh, counselors have other reasons, but that was the recommendation of the committee. Okay, thank you. Are there any council questions? Councilor Rell. <laughs> Sorry, Jack. Okay. Um, it, it, it's my understanding the state of Connecticut has um, recently adopted a number of uh, new laws dealing with the opioid crisis. Uh, one being that uh, prescribers cannot prescribe more than seven days, I think, to adults and more than five days to children uh, unless they have uh, documented need 
for pain mm -hmm. management. Um, are we, and I wish the chief was still here, are we seeing a, um, a problem that other towns are seeing with the abuse of opioids here in Wethersfield? And if so, are we seeing it through illegal drug use or is it through prescription drug use? Well, um, I'm, first of all, I'm not an uh, expert on opioids and that's why we're going out to outside council. But uh, I did talk to uh, other towns that hired this particular firm. They were all happy with the firm. In addition, I spoke to the police chief and the manager on the subject. I think we've, in Wethersfield, had numerous, had several deaths attributed to opioids, overdoses, and um, it's a problem throughout, you know, it's a national problem, certainly. Mm -hmm. uh, we've had, in addition, there are, there are aspects of health insurance for employees, there's lost time, there's training, extra training, there's purchase of Narcom, uh, training to administer Narcam, um, there's you know, uh, time involved of first responders. There's a lot of uh, potential areas of damage uh, that uh, financially that uh, are in play. And also, in a sense, it's like the tobacco litigation that if you don't participate in this, uh, you're not going to share in whatever settlement may be out there. Uh, so I think there's a lot of reasons. But uh, Mr. Lesser has been, and I think he may, you know, and, and I know the whole council is, aware of the concern and whenever it strikes in any families and I, I suspect here that everybody in this room knows somebody or some family that's been affected by this uh, uh, no this doubt problem. yeah no doubt yeah. Uh, I'm typically not the type to support you know lawsuits for manufacturers of you know opioids automobiles guns or, or what have you um, you know, I think it is a control, a controlled substance. Um, you know, our pharmacies, our doctors, um, negligent owners of or prescribers of uh, of or users of uh, opioids. You know, everybody's to blame. Uh, but you are right. the The issue of opioids is not going to go away anytime soon. Um, this is something that has um, manifested itself. Uh, 10 times is worse than any other drug from the 80s, you know, well, before me, 60s with marijuana, cocaine, crack cocaine, heroin's always been around, but something has now tripped it to the next level. Um, you're right, businesses are feeling a hit from it, you know, their insurance is going up, uh, loss of uh, workforce uh, is a problem. I'm sure municipalities are feeling it on their municipal uh, level, not f through the first responders, if you will, through the Narcan, but through, you know, employees of municipalities as well. Um, for that reason, I, I will support this tonight going forward because, you know, if, if you don't participate, you're not, you're going to miss out on any kind of settlement. Right. And I think a dollar, even if it's a dollar to help, you know, offset any of the costs that this is, uh, is happening. Um, in towns, but I do want to make the point that this, you know, I don't think they're going directly at the problem with this. I, I, everybody's kind of nipping around the edges over the last couple of years, be it the legislature by limiting the, uh, the numbers of prescribed pills for opioids or, you know, tracking some dealers here and there. Um, but I think there's a, there's a lot of problems that need to be addressed. Um, Going directly at the manufacturer is not one of them, but uh, um, this is one of those steps to go in the right direction. So I'll be supporting this tonight. Thank you. Thank you. Any other questions? Council Latina? Sorry. Um, do I read it right that we don't pay anything up front? It's just if they are. Right. It's a, it's a contingent uh, fee agreement and. Uh, um, 23% is the contingent fee, and they're going to uh, uh, front the cost. So, uh, uh, the, you know, there'll be some participation by the town in assembling documents and that sort of thing, but there won't be, shouldn't be any kind of expenditure required by the town. And there's no stipulation on if you do achieve a settlement, you or this body, whomever is sitting here, could 
allocate the funds towards social services or towards something else associated with opioids? There's no restriction on your ability to do that, right? Okay. Thank you. Yeah. Any other questions? I'll just make a comment. Um, one of the things that impressed me was that they were they were very efficient with the use of the the town's time in putting the discovery together. So, you know, they know what they're doing. They're used to working with with towns and where to go after the information. So they're not going to. It's not going to be laborious for us to participate. Thank you. Anything else? Okay. Seeing none. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Thank you. Okay, the next order, approval of a dial a ride expansion grant. Do I have a motion? Too much. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> I, move, uh, I move to authorize the town manager to apply for and accept a state matching grant program for elderly and disabled, and disabled demand responsive transportation dial a ride expansion grant in the amount of $31,733 for Weathersfield and $89,436 total to sign a memorandum of understanding with the towns of Newington and Rocky Hill to provide a tri-town medical transportation service. Thank you. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Mr. Thank you, Madam Mayor and Council. Kathy Bagley and Erica Texera from Social Media Services are here to, to review this item with you. Thank you. Good evening. Good evening. Um, this grant is, uh, we've had it from the state since 2006, and we've been in conjunction with Newington and Rocky Hill, and we were notified that there will be funds again next year for it, so we want to go ahead and apply. And it allows us to provide medical transportation rides to our residents uh, in other towns than our, that our current <coughs> dial-a-ride does not provide. So it's a really very advantageous to the town to be able to do this and it's mostly for our, our elderly residents thank you are there any council questions okay seeing none <laughs> it was easy was um, seeing none all in favor aye. Aye. aye opposed and any abstentions abstain okay thank you motion passes thank you, thank you. Um, the next item is the disposal of the old docks at Millwoods Park in the Cove. Make a motion to authorize the disposal of the old docks at the Cove and Millwoods Park by best offer or refuse. Okay, sir. Okay, very good. We have a motion and a second. Are we having Kathy come back up? Are you taking this one, Mr. Manager? Um, they're junk. We want to get rid of them. <laughs> okay. <laughs> They've been replaced. All right, very good. Are there any council questions or comments? there be a fiscal note with those would we make money off of any sale or are we just donating them um, we'll be happy to give them to somebody who's willing to haul them away <laughs> and then is there any liability uh, we would make sure there'd be a bill of sale that says you're taking them as is with all due privilege or whatever language okay. there is. I'll look to Jack to write something hey Councilor Latina I was just gonna say what if no one wants them what do we uh, do? On fire by the coast. We'll break them up and, and <laughs> yeah. put them in the dumpsters at the transfer station. Okay, thank you. Okay, any other questions or comments? Okay, seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion passes. Thank you. There are no bids tonight. We have no ordinances, resolutions, or appointments for introduction. So we will move into the minutes. We have the minutes of May 7th. Do I have a motion? Make a motion to approve meeting minutes of May 7th, 2018. Is there a second? Second. Okay, are there any additions or changes to those minutes? Seeing none, all in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed, any abstentions? Abstain. Okay, thank you, motion passes. I think I need to abstain. I wasn't there either. Sorry. Okay. No worries. Two abstentions, Dolores. Yep. Um, do I have a motion for the meeting minutes of May 10th? Motion to approve the meeting minutes of May 10th. Is there a second? Second. Okay. Are there any additions or corrections to those minutes? All right. All in favor? 
Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Okay, motion passes. Thank you. Meeting minutes of May 14th. Is there a motion? Motion to approve meeting minutes of May 14th. Second. Okay, are there any corrections or changes to those minutes? Okay, all in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion passes. Thank you. Uh, we'll move back into public comment. Are there any members of the public who would like to speak? Sir, come on up. <clears throat> if you just state your name and address for the record again, please. My name is Ethan Guida. I am live on 490 Knott Street, Weathersfield, Connecticut. Thank you. I'm not happy to look at the 9-11 memorial. It's totally trash of all that rock salt you guys used. And especially at seeing it with the curb, like damage, it's not good. It reflects very poorly amongst us as a town. A couple tourists said it, it looked like hell in a handbasket, to be honest with you. It was like a mess, which that's definitely not good. Because especially it's supposed to reflect all those people who died and the families who worked hard for it. And plus, for the snowplow drivers, especially my mom had two close calls with the snowplow drivers in the wintertime. Like one of them almost ran a lead light on Walkett Hill Road. <coughs> and like one of them almost hit my mother's car on Wells Road, which I'm not too pleased about. And let me see what else. And, and also I want to tell you about, uh, you know, like on Tanglewood Road, they're waiting a long time to get the road paved. I want the road to get paved, you know. Because I'm definitely concerned about the potholes since I'm a cyclist. I don't want to fall off my bike and get hurt with these potholes. So they, so they need to get fixed. Also, I would like to do, I wish we could use the old railroad tracks and turn that in for a nice little greenway for the town of Weathersfield going all the way to Middletown and back from Hartford to Middletown. I think it would be a nice little staple piece if we can use the railroad tracks and make a nice little greenway for the cyclist. Because definitely bicycle riding's becoming very popular, you know. Like, we li like live in a town and there maybe want some people who might want to have a direct route up to Weathersfield and, and into Hartford and back down towards Middletown. I would like to definitely consider putting in a greenway. I think that would be nice. Especially they're working on the East Coast Greenway, and so when it's done, when that greenway is done, it's going to be a big bicycle path from Maine to Florida. So I would definitely like to get more bicycle friendly in this town, like fixing the potholes, making a nice greenway, and also, how come we cannot do something nice like West Hartford, like a blueback square, you know, in town, you know, that was a, I think a blueback square in Weathersville might be real nice. And then definitely attractive business, and you guys will get a lot of money for your projects that the town does. Thank you. You're welcome. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak? Mr. Colantonio? Good evening again. Gus Colantonio, 16 Morrison Avenue. You know, I, lately I've been working in the garden a lot and I think of you guys every day. And I tell you, how insensitive I've been coming right here now and complain about certain things in Morrison Avenue for the past 10 years. Nothing gets done. And I believe that the only person that has been on the street checking out things is the town manager. I've told you before on many occasions that basically before 1955, Morrison Avenue never connected to Silas Dean, which meant that there was no true traffic. 
I compare Morrison Avenue with Hillcrest Avenue on a daily basis. And lately, because I'm home all the time, just the fact what I see it, that the Lamour or uh, these flatbed trucks go by four, five, six times on a street that does not really meet any requirements at all. Don't forget now, Morrison Avenue is 24 feet wide. Hillcrest Avenue is 30 feet wide. I've told you that before, right? At the intersection of Hillcrest and and uh, Hillcrest and the other one, which one is it now? Wow, but anyway, at the, at the intersection there, they have three stop sign. On my side of Morrison Avenue, it's only two. I've told you that before that basically we have only three feet wide grass strip. Hillcrest Avenue is 15. In one section of Morrison Avenue, we have no uh, grass strip at all. On the other side, we have only two feet. That does not really meet any requirements. At the intersection, well, again, it doesn't come to mind. I'm getting older anyway. Uh, the, the width of Morrison Avenue is not even 24 feet wide. Why was it built that way? The traffic on Hillcrest Avenue is half of the traffic on Morrison Avenue, and yet nobody cares about it. During the school year, there are about 40, 45 kids that cross at the most dangerous place on Morrison Avenue, which is at Tifton and Morrison <coughs> Avenue. The site distance is poor. I've been, uh, I've been checking with uh, the police department uh, to see if they ever check back after the construction of the sidewalk, and they don't have any records at all. Matter of fact, uh, the last time I called was Friday. I left a message. I never got a call back. <coughs> but I've been trying to see if, they, if, if there is anybody in the police department that has seen the, Mor well, seen, I guess they've seen Morrison Avenue before, but did they really consider the intersection of Tifton and Morrison Avenue as safe? Nobody can tell me, yes, we have seen that. So in all, it's a mess. It's been 10 years. I've been complaining, and yet nothing ever gets done. This is unbelievable. None of you guys have been there. Come on over. I'll give you a cup of coffee, some pizza, and we'll talk about my concerns, and then we'll see what happens. Another thing, too, I am in the backyard most of the time, and I hear the cars going by so freaking fast. People go faster than 31 miles per hour. The posted speed is 25 and nobody does anything. Why? Okay. I guess I have another minute, um, minute to. Now, I said also before that basically noise travel, not on a straight line, but it's exponential. In other words, the closer you are in the noise source, the, the, the louder it seems, you know. The frontage setback on Morrison Avenue is much, much less than on Hillcrest Avenue. Because Morrison Avenue was never meant to be a true street. You guys have done that. You opened it up in 1955. And the residents on the street are paying the price. And yet, yet, nobody's doing anything. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Colantonio. Is there anybody else you'd like to speak tonight? Mr. Mazzarella. <coughs> Good evening, Tom Mazzarella, 600 Walcott Hill Road. I just wanted to make a couple comments. Uh, one, when Superintendent Emmett spoke, he mentioned the 300 plus uh, units of additional uh, housing that are being constructed in town. and. Uh, he had some concerns about the potential impact on the school system. I just want everybody to be rest assured. We, we received all kinds of assurance from the developers, planners, that those are going to be occupied by millennials and they don't reproduce, so there won't be any impact on the school system. 
the uh, all joking aside, the, the numbers were below 10 combined for all those units. Um, I also wanted to comment on uh, potential increase in the tax base for those developments, particularly this fun zone development in uh, 275 Ridge. Uh, tax abatements are in place for those properties, so we shouldn't figure on any positive effect on those developments for a number of years. Something to keep in the back of your mind. It's great to in increase the grand list, but if we keep giving out tax abatements, it doesn't help our current situation. The other thing I wanted to talk briefly about is our mill rate. And uh, some people feel that the mill rate's not a great indicator of what's going on in town, and I, I strongly disagree with that. <clears throat> I was away this weekend in Massachusetts, and uh, I was at the home of a former Wethersfield resident uh, who owns two properties in Massachusetts, uh, one in Bridgewater and one in South Yarmouth. And the topic of mill rates came up. I'm not sure who brought it up. It wasn't me. I don't want to talk about mill rates on the weekends. <laughs> Needless to say, <clears throat> ours being over 40 now, and theirs being 12 and 8. And uh, the question came up uh, from my friend's wife. He said, why would anybody live in Wethersfield if the mill rate's over 40? That is just insane. Well, you know, you have family here, you have other obligations, and everybody just can't move. But, uh, you know, the fact remains that that's just a staggering number. And uh, I'm afraid it's only going to get worse unless we come up with a new plan. And I think the new plan has to be reduce the amount of spending because we're not going to get more money from the state. It's going to go in the opposite direction. It's going to go lower and lower each year for the foreseeable future. And uh, if you keep increasing the spending, you have no recourse but to get those shortfall from the taxpayers. And uh, at some point, it's just not going to be sustainable, and people are going to move, or people are going to stop paying their taxes. Thank you. Thank you. Are there any other members of the public who would like to speak this evening? <coughs> Mr. Young. Good evening, Robert Young, 20 Copper Mill Road. Um, tonight you had a discussion regarding the, uh, the old docks and the uh, whatever those things are that float out in the water that you want to get rid of now and be replaced. It appeared to me that it was only maybe five or ten years ago we got those floating piers or those floating things that go out where the boat, where a boat could pull up to and people can walk out into the deeper water on those buoy type things. It wasn't long ago. And now, dispose of them. Well, you said you'd give them to anybody. You want to get rid of them, the old ones, and you're going to replace them with new ones. Are, are these the new ones? No, or these that are, are the yeah. ones. You're going to get rid of the old no, ones. The ones we were, these are the ones we replaced with the floating ones that you're talking about. Okay. Let, well, let's the let floating ones, are you keeping them? Yeah. Yes. Because those things that they showed in, uh, in your agenda, they look like they were things that float. They, they are, but the new ones are a, a plastic connected to rubber bands that rise and fall with the water. Those are staying. Those, Those are, brand are new. staying. Those are brand well, new. Well, thank goodness you, see, you, kept, you kept them. I mean, they, they should last decades. We intend so. And more. Okay. Also, tonight I have to follow up on Tom regarding the um, discussion by the superintendent. And the 300 new units that are coming on board. I do recall myself listening to these experts regarding there was only going to be a few children that are going to come out of those buildings. 
on, because apartments, one bedroom, two bedroom apartments are not applicable or they're not, they don't apply very well for family life unless they're certain kind of people. Uh, then they could just pack them in there. But the fact remains, uh, I don't know even know why the superintendent brought up the number or the, the issue because those apartments shouldn't generate anything as far as to affect our school system. I mean, they're just not built for those reasons, I don't think. But if they are, then the experts were all wrong. And when experts are wrong, they should be held to the fire on what they've said. And thank goodness it's all on, on writing and it's on tape. But um, I, I, I believe that we need to look at closing down a school I don't know about spending $62,000 to bring some stranger in or some uh, consultants in to tell our school system what they have to do. I mean, they're smart people. They know how to make the numbers work. We've seen enough of that. And making the numbers work would be to reduce. Reduce the size of their schools. Reduce the size of their staff. There's, there's work that those folks are doing that they shouldn't be doing. And I've seen some of it. Yet nobody cares. Especially you folks. Especially the Board of Education. As long as they keep going forward, keep getting increases from the rest of us. And while we're getting increases, we're seeing that home sales have dropped. I don't know how they're doing now, but from the budget, of last year to the budget of this year, you lost $8,300 per house that sold. Yet you gave them all raises. In business, that wouldn't happen. It'd be zero or less. So, folks, you got a lot of work to do. And I've said this more than once, and then you didn't do it. You continue not to do it. I guess it's much easier to raise taxes and tell citizens that their five minutes are up than to go take action and, save, and find savings. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anybody else who'd like to speak tonight? Mr. Rue? to be a very popular song. It's been a long, long time. And so it's, it has been a long time. George Rue, 956 Cloverdale Circle. I'm usually at home falling asleep in front of TV at this particular time, but I've been accumulating all of my comments and I need at least a half an hour. <laughs> so, uh, but in any event, I, I do have one brief comment, a suggestion. Uh, the uh, comments of the uh, uh, superintendent of schools on a committee to review the schools. Some years back, when I was still a Republican, I was appointed as chairman of the, flood of the Educational Facility <coughs> Survey Committee, which was referred to as EFSCO. This was some name I dreamed up. I don't know how it came about, but it just kind of popped out. And uh, one of the things was to ostensibly review the condition of all of our schools, both from a physical perspective, make some predictions relative to uh, 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 future school enrollments and all of that stuff. And that was at a time where we didn't even have computers. You used to make hand charts, which we included in the final report, and the reports were all manually typed, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And ostensibly, the thing that developed early on, or relatively early on, is the appointment of the committee was to provide the opportunity, no, provide the background for Mix Mitchell School, which it was now their turn, quote, to get a new school. And that was a quote by Dr. Hufziger, who was the then superintendent of schools. And, I would, you know, the committee almost went along with it. And I said, well, you can go along with it, but if you do, I'm going to write a blistering minority report. And they all backed off, and we proceeded to do our work without the help of the superintendent at all. And I'm not even sure if we hired consultants or did it all ourselves. I'm not sure. My counsel. Uh, the guy that appointed me, Deke Winkfield, was a very, very highly, 
qualified engineer from Pratt & Whitney, a very, very sophisticated engineer. And uh, I don't know what he saw in me. Maybe he, maybe he just said, I'm a good engineer. I don't know. But, but in any event, my, my counsel was, as we looked at the schools, one of the things that was, became very apparent to us that there was, in many cases, a significant amount of physical neglect that could be repaired even in old schools, even in schools such as Mix Mitchell at that particular time, to bring them up into standards without having them to be the result of a wish list. My Johnny's got to have the perfect school. We need a new school. It's their turn, and all of that kind of stuff. My final comment on this, where I'm going, is make sure as if and when a committee would be appointed to do this, okay, which I, I'm presuming will happen somewhere along the line, Make sure that there are at least one or several engineers on that particular committee. Engineers can be damn hard-nosed. They, they think a little, they're, they're a little bit less emotional than, than, you know, my wife or all the mamas and the daddies around town who have to have the very best for Johnny vis-a-vis -vis what might be the best in the best interest and the most economical approach for the, to, to use in the town, by the town, in the construction, in, in taking on what I think may very well be a major, a major project and may very well end up costing an awful lot of money. And it's got to get done. If it's got to get done, it's get done. But obviously, attempt to get it done at a minimal cost. And I believe engineers can help you do that. Thank you. Thank you. Is there anybody else from the public who'd like to speak tonight? Anyone else? Okay, seeing none, um, I would like a motion, please, to go into executive session to discuss um, collective bargaining and land. Do you want to, uh, they're two separate ones. So let's do the land use first, that way Jack can you know, go home. Okay, very good. Do, then let's have a motion to go into executive session for land acquisition. So moved. Is there a second? Second. Okay, all in favor? Aye. Aye. Opposed, abstained, motion passes. Thank you. Good evening. <laughs>